Hello, this is Lee from Woodland Classroom and today I'm going to take you on a walk in the woods and along some hedgerows and show you 12 common wild flowers that you find in springtime so that you can go out and confidently identify them for yourself. All these wild flowers are spring specialists and they will tend to flower between late February and May time and they are a really important source of nectar for all our pollinating insects. These flowers are taking advantage of the sunlight coming through onto the forest floor before the canopy above them closes up and all the leaves of the trees are in full bloom. Hunting for wildflowers is a really good excuse to get outside after we've been cooped up indoors all winter, avoiding the bad weather. So it's a great activity to do, to get the most of the sunlight and welcome spring and the coming of summer. Here I am in a damp meadow with lady smock or cuckoo flower. So these are found in wet areas, so it could be a wet woodland, a meadow like this one along streams and riversides and it's a pretty spring flower that we can identify quite easily. It's got these delicate lilac flowers with darker lilac veins running through the petals. There are four petals, they're in clusters with these very delicate leaves part way down the stem. This flower has a high content of vitamin C in it. In fact, five times more than that of a lemon. So it can be used as a remedy or as a food, maybe in a salad. This is also a favorite food of the orange tip butterfly. The reason this is also called a cuckoo flower is because you can very often find cuckoo spit on it, which is a foamy liquid that encases the larvae of a meadow frog hopper, which is like a little green bug. Hedgerows are a great place to look for wild flowers. In a small patch you can find a real variety of lots of different flowers in the springtime. This one you may have seen plenty of times but might not know the name of. This is greater stitchwort and very typically found in hedgerows and woodlands. And it's these little white flowers with a yellow centre. They've got quite small spear-like, quite delicate leaves. These aren't the leaves, this is surrounded by dog's mercury which has nothing to do with the stitchwort. Now, you might be mistaken for thinking it has 10 petals. It's not, it's got five petals, but each petal is split into two, which looks like two petals, but it's in fact just the one. Here we are with the lesser celandine. This is a very commonly found spring plant, giving that burst of yellow to the countryside. It's really prolific as well as you can see here. It's got these happy little yellow faces that brighten your day and they open right out when the sun's shining on them. Now these are commonly mistaken for buttercups however they are part of the buttercup family but whereas the buttercup has very rounded petals and come later in the year these have more elongated petals, more star-like shaped. Their leaves are heart-shaped, a little bit waxy, and they spread all over, as you can see. But these are a beautiful wildflower that we see right early in spring, one of the first ones to give that colour to the landscape. These are a low growing flower that spread out like a carpet, giving a golden hue to all the grass. Now, apparently early in their life they are edible but then later on become slightly poisonous so I wouldn't even bother trying to eat them. Just look at them, that's the best thing. 
here we have a rather fabulous wild flower. The, even the leaves are quite dramatic. Look at the flowers. They look like they belong more in a jungle than they do here in Britain. These are called Lords and Ladies or Cuckoo Pint. And these flowers are green, which is quite unusual. In the autumn, these will actually transform into towers of orangey red berries, which look just as dramatic as the flowers and the leaves do at this time of year. It, it's a wonderful looking plant, very often grows near wild garlic, but we always talk about it when we're talking about our wild garlic plant because this is very poisonous. So you'd never want to mix the two up. Sometimes you can find the leaves have these blotches of purple on them. Here's the young flower, all tightly wrapped up, about to unfurl into the mature flower, which will reveal that large brown stamen inside. There really is no mistaking this flower for any other wild flower. And even the leaves, now they're mature, are quite distinctive too. But it really is a spectacular looking flower. Don't ever forget, it is poisonous. Here I am at the edge of a woodland, surrounded by the lesser celandine and the white flower, which we're talking about now, the wood anemone. So this is one of the first spring flowers to bloom after the last snow of winter and it loves the woodland. They're very often white flowers, as you can see, quite delicate and fragile looking flowers, just tinged with a very pale pink. Although sometimes you can find they're not white at all, but they are quite pink. There's usually a pink one dotted amongst the white ones. Their petals, there's usually six or seven, and the leaves, the, each leaf is split into three distinctive lobes, which again is lobed. And they actually produce this quite attractive carpet on the forest floor. The wood anemone takes advantage of the sunlight coming through the forest canopy before the leaves are formed on the trees, getting that little bit of sunlight and then it starts to shade over and these will flower until until May probably. The wood anemone is also an indicator of an ancient woodland site which means this has been a woodland at least since the 1600s. Here we are with the bluebell, very often people's favourite spring plant. Now it's mid-April, we're in North Wales and they're just starting to come out into flower. I normally think of these as a May flowering plant. The flower itself has a trumpet-like shape, making them very easy to identify. We can get Spanish bluebells and hybrids that people plant in their garden. The key difference that I've noticed is our natives, the flowers hang down as if they're shy. Whereas the hybrid ones tend to, tend to stand more proud and upright. But these are very much loved in this country. They have the beautiful blue purple tones and these spike like leaves, very smooth, shiny leaves. And they're very delicate. And like I said, almost as if they're shy and coy. Here we have marsh marigold. This flower you will only find in wet areas. So a wet clearing in a woodland, on a wet meadow, by rivers and in damp areas. And it is a member of the buttercup family, which you can easily see with these bright golden colored flowers. It has five petals, but obviously it's, a, it's much bigger than the buttercups and the celandine, which are also members of the buttercup family. But it's a beautiful, happy plant that um, is very much visited by lots of in insects and pollinators. 
it really stands out in a wet meadow. So the leaves are quite distinctive shapes, you can see, quite heart-like, the big fleshy stem. And in this particular wet meadow, you can see just patches of gold all the way through the meadow. It looks fabulous at this time of year. It really is a beautiful spring wild flower. Here I am with another delightful spring plant. It's the primrose with its beautiful buttery yellow petals. There are five petals and a bright yellow centre. Sometimes these can be pink in colour, but more often than not you'll find that they're yellow. They have quite a thick uh, textured leaf and they, are, they grow from a rosette. So these are quite easy to identify. Primroses are one of the first flowers to come out in spring. So they're a real welcomer and a promise of good weather and sunshine to come. They're lovely plants. These are probably coming to the end of the season now as we head into the end of April. But the nice thing to do if there's plenty of them about near you is to pick the flowers off and put them on top of a salad or your pasta because they are totally edible. In amongst all these primroses, there's another spring wildflower plant, and that's the dog violet. And I've got, had to get down really low for this one because it's quite a low growing plant. And it's quite a small one, but it's a beautiful purple colour with three petals pointing down and two pointing up. It's also easily distinguished because it grows up and over so the flower itself comes up and over and hangs down a little bit like the bluebell but then it sort of opens up with its top petals. It's got a pale almost white centre with some purple lines coming out into the petals. Looking at the back of the flower this is really distinctive. It's almost like a little white horn sticking out the back and underneath the stem. It's coy shy looking plant and it's a nice one to spot on the woodland floor. The leaves are heart shaped and again quite small and there are lots of different types of violet, common violet, dog violet, apparently up to 500 but we don't need to know the particulars. All we know is this is, the, this is one found commonly in woodlands and hedgerows. Here I am with the wood sorrel. This delicate little flower, it definitely reminds me of the wood anemone. So it's got the five white delicate petals, but it's got these purple veins running through the inside of the petals. It's a lovely little flower found in hedgerows just like this. And the reason it's worth mentioning is because the leaves are an amazing little edible, a great tasty snack while on your walk. They taste very much lemony or apple -y. To me they taste just like Granny Smith's apples. This one is wood sorrel. It does look completely different to the field sorrel. This one is found very much in the shade under trees, whereas the field sorrel will more commonly be found out in the open. It doesn't have the flowers like this one does. They're pretty little flowers. Definitely one to have a little snack as you pass by. Now this is probably the most common of all the wild flowers. It's found on all the waysides, hedgerows, footpaths, roadsides, fields. It's everywhere. In fact, you probably see it so much you don't even notice it. This is cow parsley. Another name for this plant is Queen Anne's Lace. This form of flowers is called an umbellifer and it's one flower made up into lots of tiny ones. It's almost like a firework or a burst of little flowers coming out. The leaves are very much fern-like and the stem 
is quite thick as you get down to the bottom with lots of ridges in it. So it's the leaves, these fern-like leaves that we can use to distinguish this plant and make sure it's not one of the hemlocks or hogweeds which can be poisonous. Here we have forget-me-not. It's a very tiny little flower that sits in a cluster of other flowers. Now there are lots of different types of forget-me-not. There's water forget-me-not, wood forget-me-not, field forget-me-not. Doesn't matter for the purpose of this. They all pretty much look the same with these tiny little blue, bright blue flowers that really ping out against the green background. There's five petals, the stems and leaves are very hairy and they stand up to about 30, 40 centimetres but can be creeping along the floor as well. The blue is really beautiful and the yellow centre really stands out in these tiny, delicate little flowers. Flowers can change colour from pinks to blues to purples and this is to do with the soil and whether it's acid or alkaline and this can change over time. Other flowers can do this like the lungwort. This video has been created for our Find Your Wild series which is funded by our patrons. And if you want to find out more about how you can get exclusive access to Find Your Wild you can find the link in the description below. Or you could subscribe to this channel for lots more videos all about nature connection. Or you could head over to our website woodlandclassroom.com for all the courses we run here in North Wales. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank you.